In this tutorial, we are going to build a simple flow sheet, which is the recommended starting point for an Aspen Absorption Simulation. This is basically a breakthrough operation, and it is used to ensure that the simulation of the absorption bed works effectively, and to enable some early testing of key model parameters and assumptions. It is an easier way to troubleshoot any inconsistencies or any initial convergence problems. Let's start by becoming familiar with the AtSim library. If we look under the Simulation Explorer, we have Libraries, and in the Libraries folder we have the AtSim library. This is the Aspen Adsorption library. And this library contains several folders. We're going to work with the models in the Gas Dynamic folder, and we're going to need a stream to connect those models, and the stream con is contained in the Stream Types folder. You can see there are several different folders for different models that we have available in the library. The gas CSS folder contains the cyclic steady state models. These models are used both for calculating the cyclic steady state in a faster manner and they can also switch to dynamic simulation calculation. The guys dynamic dynamic models are the uh, models that have been in use for longer and they're used predominantly in dynamic mode. They can also calculate the cyclic steady state by le leaving the simulation to run long enough until this steady state is achieved. Then we have another folder for ion exchange models and liquid models. If we look in the gas dynamic folder we have several models here to model the different parts of the absorption process. We are now going to create the flow sheet and enter the required input. We need a gas feed, a gas product and a gas bed models connected with the gas material connection stream. In the tools menu under settings we have in the auto name tab an option to switch off the automatic block name generation. It's okay to leave the stream name generation on automatic, so you don't have to be prompted for a stream name every time. But for a block, you probably want to give them more meaningful names than just have them automatically generated. So now we're ready to create the flow sheet. We need a gas bed model in the flow sheet. So we drag and drop it to the flow sheet. And when prompted, we enter a name for it. We need the gas feed block and we need a gas product block. And these are the three blocks for the simple flow sheet. Now we need to connect these blocks using a stream and for the gas dynamic models we need to use the gas material connection stream. So we're going to drag and drop it onto the flow sheet and we can see that the ports where the stream can be connected to are already highlighted here in blue. So we place the mouse over the process output of the feed and, and then over the process in port of the bed and then we do the same for the outlet of the bed. And here we have the full flow sheet defined. Now we can start entering information. Each block has a configuration form associated with it. So if we start with the feed and double click the feed block, we can see the configuration block for the feed. The model type can be reversible per pressure setter or non-reversible. Reversible pressure setter allows for reverse flow. So say if all of a sudden the pressure on the outlet is higher than pressure on the inlet, then the flow is reversed through the bed and the feed becomes the product. So we're going to choose that option. And now we're going to click the specify button to enter the data for this feed block. We want to fix the flow and give it a value of 5e-7. And the feed is going to be air, so we're going to give it the air composition. And the pressure is fixed as well. We're going to give it a value of 
0.045 bars. And that is the specification form for the feed completed. Now let's look into more detail into this configuration form for the bed model. You can have several layers in the bed. We're just going to have one in this case. And the bed type can be vertical or horizontal, radial, or user-defined. We're going to choose vertical. And for vertical case, you can have 1D dimensions or 2D dimensions, so either axial only or axial and radial dimensions. We're going to keep it with 1D dimensions for this case. And in this case, we also are not going to use any internal heat exchangers. So the next step now is to define the layer. So we have one layer. You can leave the description as a sorbent layer, or you can give your own description in here. And these are actually buttons that will open the configuration form for the layer and the specification form for the layer. You can also click here in the icon to open the configuration form for the layer. So the way you fill in the information here is by basically going through the different tabs to enter your assumptions. And let's start with the general tab. In the general tab, we entered the uh, discretization method, which we're going to leave as default, and the number of nodes, which you're also going to leave as default. I want to point out this help button here, which will open the online help in the context appropriate part of the online help for this um, specification form or any other specification form. So in this case, we can go straight to the overview of numerical methods you have some information here about the numerical methods and about choosing them. The next tab is the Material Momentum Balance tab. In the Material Balance assumption, we can have convection only, or we can assume some sort of dispersion, say either constant dispersion, estimated dispersion, or enter your own user submodel for the dispersion. You will see this happening in many parts of the configuration of your Aspen Absorption Simulation, there is often a user submodel option where you can customize further the um, library models if your system requires that. So we're going to leave convection only. For the momentum balance assumption, we have several different assumptions here. We're going to choose Carmen Kazeni. Again, you can have a look at all these options in the online help. They're all described there. Now the Kinetic tab, we're going to leave all the default options here. Um, for the film model assumption, we can have solid or fluid. And then for the Kinetic model assumption, we can assume lumped resistance, or we can actually model the discretization along the particle using the particle material balance option. And again, your own user submodel. For the mass transfer coefficient, we're going to leave it as constant, but you have different options there to choose from. Next comes the isotherm tab. We have several isotherms defined in the library. So these are the equations. You will need to have your own parameters for the equations. You can also have your own user submodel entered there. Again, more information is in the online help. We're going to choose extended Langmuir 1 for this case. And we're going to leave the isotherm dependency as concentration. Our system is actually isothermal, so we don't need to make any changes here in the energy balance assumption. And we also do not have any reactions. Once we've entered all the uh, assumptions for the bed model, we can then open the specify table. The variables that appear in the specify table depend on the assumptions you've made. So it's not always going to look like this. Uh, mainly, you need to give the geometry and then whatever parameters are required for the assumptions you've made. I'm now going to enter the information for this bed. Note that you have this units column where you can actually change the units and the system will do the conversions and make sure that the right units are in use by the solver. There's no voidage assumed for the interparticle voidage because we're using a lumped resistance method. For the isotherm parameters, I suggest you click on the Help button when you're picking the isotherm and have a look at the expression in the online help so you know what these IP values refer to. 
One of the things I would like to point out in the isotherm parameters, they're actually a two-dimensional array. The first dimension is the parameter number, and the second is the component name. So we finished with the specification form. The next step is to define the initial condition for this layer. What we define here, again, we have two-dimensional arrays. Why are the mole fractions uh, for each component and in this case for node number one in the uh, discretization of the column and W is the loading. So for these arrays Y and W the first dimension is always the node number and the second is the component name. So we're going to enter for the first node the composition. We're going to assume the column is full of nitrogen and the next thing to point out here is the specification column. The mole fraction variables are defined as initial. That means that the value I enter here is going to be used at time zero when the initialization run is done. So it's going to be fixed at that value and the solver will calculate the rate of change, so the derivative. In the case of loading, we have a specification of rate initial. And this is what I want in this case. So what we're specifying is actually the derivative of the loading in terms of time. So we are assuming that there is no change in the loading at time zero. In, in order to satisfy the sum of the compositions being one, we have to free one of these molar compositions. And you should always think about freeing the one that's got a highest, the higher value. That will help the solver in the calculations. Now you will notice that we're only entering values for the first node. So the next step will be to click this initialize button which will copy the first node's values to all the other nodes in this layer. Now the whole layer has been initialized with a composition of one for nitrogen. The other thing I want to point out are these open and save buttons. Once you enter all the assumptions in these tabs and then enter the data for the column in the specify form, you can click the save button to save this configuration. What this means is that if you have another simulation where you want to enter the same layer configuration, or even if you have a second layer in this bed and you want to enter the same layer configuration, you can do so by using the open button and then picking that file and click open. That will save some time and any possible mistakes on entering the information all over again. Lastly, we have to configure the product unit. The product unit doesn't require much configuration. Again, we're going to leave reversible pressure setter in case we want to allow for reverse flow. And because this is a product, the values are going to be calculated from the inlet in this case. If you remember, the feed flow and pressure have been fixed. So I need to free here the pressure. And I now have a square system, as you can see here at the bottom. So the degrees of freedom are all accounted for.